Well, so good afternoon. I mean, it's a gift to share today and this process with you all. This is a challenge. Like you said, that light at the end of the tunnel throughout most of these weeks, I was afraid was the train. So <laughs> it's nice that it wasn't that we're here. So in order to go over my class, I need to provide some context because my class is an interesting hybrid between sort of a traditional class that we might see and one that would almost fall in between continuing it. So here in the social work department, we are adding a series of postgraduate courses to help clinical social workers, people that are working in the community, providing behavioral health services, uh, providing psychotherapy, to be able to try to move towards seeking licensure here in the state of Indiana as clinical addiction counselors. Unfortunately, in our training and even in the field and in funding for the field, there's been this unfortunate separation between therapists who treat most all other conditions, like especially mental health, and the ones who treat addictions. So they often have different training standards and unfortunately, like I said, even different uh, funding sources from the state and federal government. Uh, so what happened was a couple of years ago here in Indiana is that Indiana adopted addiction specific licensure. So now in order to practice uh, clinically with people who are receiving services for problems with substance use and addiction is that you're supposed to be moving towards or having this license. Before they created this, lots of different licensed practitioners were providing these services. So for an example, I'm a licensed clinical social worker, which in social work is the license that allows me to work with people uh, in therapy. But there's also licensed mental health counselors. They come from a different discipline, but same deal. Uh, licensed marriage and family therapists. You know, so all of us are doing therapy, and many people were working in the field of addictions. Now, within addictions, there were some national accrediting bodies that offered some credentials for addiction specialists, and so those were often respected but they're not the same as state licensure. Licensure always trumps other credentials, especially when it comes to reimbursement and being able to legally practice in the state. Now I say that because unfortunately, so our MSW program, our master's, is very clinically focused. So we produce very good clinicians, but unfortunately, now that the state has created these addiction uh, licenses is that they were very specific when they wrote that in about what type of classes, course material, and field experience people would have to have in order to get the license. And unfortunately, even though we have a great master's program that's clinically focused, because of our accreditation standards from our own social work accrediting body, the Council on Social Work Education, is that our students would not have certain classes with certain content that the state specified. And also with field is that now some of the people that we have do addiction specific field placements, but not everybody. So it could be possible that you could have somebody come out of our program and they would not have had the course content, the classes to be able to meet the state requirement. And depending upon where they did their field placement, they might not even have the field placement requirements specific to addiction counseling. Just as an example is that, so the majority of my practice before coming into academia was actually working with both mental health and addictions. So when the state first offered the, this addiction counseling license, they had this window of grandparenting for people that were able to show that they had a certain amount of experience that we were able to get the license without having to take the test. And I jumped at that because those tests are horrible. But if I had not done it at that point, I would be having to do the classes that we're creating because I didn't originally have these very specific classes uh, that would allow me to get the license. The reason why this is important, I had the privilege of being at a full day symposium sponsored by Deaconess uh, Health Systems on Friday that was focused on raising awareness about the opioid epidemic. And one of those presenters made a point, I can't affirm it because I don't remember exactly where he cited the data, but I also don't, 
you know, think it's wrong because I've heard this even looking at our state board, but that Indiana has the lowest number of licensed addiction professionals in any state. Uh, and that's because of some of the stringent requirements that we have and that it's sort of newer, you know, in our state where other states have had licensure for addiction counselors for a long time. So our Department of Social Work has really seen the importance uh, generally, but especially right now, specifically in our community of the tri-state, of helping to train more uh, clinicians that are capable and competent of working with addictions. And so especially to try to help them to move towards the state license. So why did I go through all that? Well, because that provides a context for this class. One of the state requirements is that you have to be able to show that somebody has completed a clinical addiction specific field placement, which means they have to fulfill a certain amount of hours where they're actually at uh, an addiction counseling facility. And then in addition to that, you have to be able to not only provide the general hours, but also to be able to document that they have provided a certain amount of face-to-face -face intervention. So there's always gonna be hours where you're at the agency where you're not necessarily working with individuals. So it's total hours, but then also specific hours providing intervention. And then you also have to be able to substantiate to the state that they have received a certain amount of clinical supervision where they have sat down and processed their work and sought guidance on their work from somebody that is a qualified supervisor. And the state defines that as somebody who has the state licensure as a clinical addiction counseling and more than five years of experience. So I was chosen to develop this class because I fit that. And not everybody at agencies that we might even have students does. So we thought we need to build in just in case students are going to be at agencies where they're not being able to receive supervision, that we can say they have it. Um, I have the licensed clinical addiction counselor here in Indiana, and I've got more than five years of experience. So the class that I developed is actually our class for when students are going to be at an addiction counseling agency providing services, and I'm going to be meeting with them to make sure that they have the required supervision for their practice. Now, while they're doing this class, is that we're developing this postgraduate series of courses where they're also going back and getting some of the content. And the class that I'm teaching is the only one that they will do that runs for a longer period of time and that will repeat. They actually might repeat this class up to three times to make sure that they get the required number of hours. Uh, so if they, you know, we have our classes set to be summer offered in the summer, some in the fall, some in the spring. People can actually start uh, at any time. They don't have to only start in the fall or only start in the spring. But regardless, is that they're going to have to be in field. And they'll be doing that while they're in other classes. So, for example, while they're in my field class, is that they also could be in one of the classes that Dr. Phillips has created. So they're in classes where they are receiving some very specific content while they're in my class that actually is very process driven. So I say that because in designing this class, I really had to focus on making sure that they're getting the field experience and they're getting the supervision to be substantiated to the state. But I also know that at the same time they're in field, they're in these other classes where they're getting very specific, you know, uh, addictions content. So my class is, in that curriculum, going to be the, the field experience where we're going to review and process what they're doing at their placement. So in creating that is that the, the main things that I have built in are requirements, coursework around making sure they document all their hours in those different areas that I explained, and that we are meeting to be able to talk about what's going on, how you doing, where are you going from here. So in my class, the way that we're gonna do that, because here comes the challenge of, okay, they need to have supervision, but all these classes are gonna be completely online, they're not even a hybrid, so how are we gonna meet? Well, we're actually gonna use Zoom to meet in a synchronous manner once a week. So although the other classes in our postgraduate series of courses are gonna be completely online, Mine, because of that requirement, is that they are going to be, 
you know, logging on to Zoom on Wednesday evenings, and then we're going to be meeting to do that supervision. So in building the class, just a, a couple of a sort of a quick tour is that obviously is like most of the classes is that with the wonderful help of Larissa, you were able to create this nice sort of start here to be able to receive a welcome message and giving them the expectation of since we are going to be meeting face to face is that they can then sort of introduce themselves and then here in each one of the, the weeks, well, it logged out. But in each one of the weeks, because we're logged under Larissa, what I have is that they have weekly assignments about keeping their contact hour logs. Then they also have a reflective journal where they're writing about what they've done at their placement, things they think they did well, questions they have. And that is actually due before we meet face to face on Zoom to be able to process it. And throughout the semester, we're going to have to coordinate a midterm and a final evaluation with their field placement to see how they're doing. Those are going to be conducted by Zoom as well. Uh, and so then they also have uh, two assignments, one about creating a learning plan of what they hope to accomplish at the field site. And then also uh, looking at how they would present the, the case or the care of somebody with whom they've been directly working at the placement. So just to give a quick example, for each one of the weeks is that there is a guide to make sure to help them to know exactly what's going to be happening that week, when things are due. Uh, each week includes an overview video to be able to walk them through that, just as some reminders. And so then, but then there's the, the link that will be for the, the Zoom meeting and then each week's kind of log and journal linked up. So in some ways the class is very repetitive, but it's structured that way because that way we're able to build in and make sure that we can uh, substantiate to the state that we have provided this experience. So the biggest thing that I think I'm most proud of is that Sadly, when it comes to technology, I take to it like a duck to flaming water. I don't want to lay it. Uh, that's about kind of using technology in general. And then specifically when it comes to sort of like the thought of teaching online. I've taught online before, but it's definitely not what I'm most comfortable with. I would rather be physically in the classroom meeting with students. And so you might say, well, then why did you agree to create a class online? because this class is very important. I believe the addiction classes we're creating are very important and they're gonna be all online. So that's the way we're gonna deliver it. Uh, so I think I'm most proud of, of kind of being open to that and persisting with it. Um, I did over the course of the weeks become a little bit more comfortable with using Zoom and reporting with that and beginning to use VoiceThread. And I think those are definitely some programs, some tools that in addition to future online classes, is I'm also likely to incorporate in some of my face-to-face -face classes as well. I would not have believed that I would have developed some baseline comfort with either of those. But I think that over the course of the weeks, that's something that I'm most proud of is sort of sticking with this and getting a little bit more comfortable with, with those technologies. Uh, I think that the best part of this experience has actually been working with the online course development staff is I think that without them in general and their expertise, but actually for me, without the consistent meetings to work on these details is that I don't think that this would have been as successful or as positive of experience. So that has been very gratifying for me is having that system in place to consistently, a structured way to work through all those parts of the course development. So any questions? Hope that exhausted all of them. <laughs>